six self-made multi-millionaires go on an incredible journey. Each week, one millionaire will give up their luxurious lifestyle and leave their family behind to live and work undercover in one of Australia's most disadvantaged communities. They'll live on just $20 a day with no credit cards or mobile phones and work as volunteers trying to find people who need their help. Yeah. Good morning. There you go. No problems. I'm fine. Let's go ahead. G'day. They'll find good people doing great things and they'll find the real meaning of community spirit. Along the way, they'll discover a different side to themselves. I mean, I already had faith in the human spirit and, like, in people, but just to see it, like, at such a grassroots level. And if you can help someone, doesn't matter which way, through money, through a hug, that means a lot to me. At the end of their stay, they will change lives forever. Open the check. When they give away thousands of dollars of their own money, and reveal that they are the secret millionaire. If the situation was reversed, you would do the same for us. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Wonderful lady. Wealthy doesn't make me feel like I've got an obligation to help. Being human makes me feel like I've got an obligation to help. One, two, three, not only you and Carly me. Crutchfield works hard at staying on top of her game. So we'll rip up this, what we're standing on. Yep. You could even put another kitchen up here and make it as a whole separate apartment. In the male-dominated world of property development, she's worked hard create a name for herself. I mean, it's going to be bloody hard work. We're going to have to go high to, to get 10 million. At the age of just 29, she heads up her own corporation, which redevelops units and townhouses, and it's big business. The company currently has more than 130 million in property holdings. Seacop's been around now for about three years, and it started me in my garage, and it's grown today to where it is now. There's over 30 staff, and it's a bit better than a garage. Carly left school in her early teens and has been working ever since. She expects her staff to work as hard as she does. She's very, very driven. You know, she's a tough taskmaster, but she also rewards well too. I think the secret of Carly's success would be that she just believes that anyone can achieve anything. I don't think that anything is impossible and I will not give up until I get that thing. I'll find a way to achieve it. <laughs> In the limited time she's not working, Carly makes sure she enjoys the spoils of her success. <laughs> Lavish lunches with friends, extravagant shopping trips, and a beautiful home. And welcome to my home. So this is where I live, this is where I chill out and relax. These are the dogs, little Elvis and Gracie. But this is my absolute favourite room of the whole house. The wardrobe. Yes, I'm obsessed with shoes. I have probably about 450 pairs. Most of my life I was never able to have this stuff. And now, you know, it's fantastic to be able to walk into Chanel and be able to buy what you want and not have to look at the price tags. 
Carly's always been headstrong and determined to make it on her own. As a kid, I always felt like I had everything in life. Like, I didn't come from a rich family, but I definitely felt like I had everything I needed. At just 13 years old, Carly was impatient to start working and decided to leave school. Parents were definitely not stoked at leaving school, and it's not necessarily something that I'd advocate. If anything, I've had to try harder to learn because I didn't have that base education. So the deal was, well, if you leave school and want to start your life, then you're responsible for your own life. So I had to start supporting myself. OK, so today is going to be hardcore. I've got heaps to do and I just need everything handled perfect so it's not an issue at all. At 18 years old, Carly started her first business, a cleaning company, and it was far from successful. I was cleaning 24-7, um, had this idea of having workers clean for me, didn't end up that way, and I was cleaning toilets myself at 4 o'clock in the morning, back up at 6 o'clock in the morning to go clean again and it was extremely stressful. I couldn't afford my rent, I got evicted, I had debts beyond imagination, I was extremely emotionally distressed, and one day I had a stroke. I got Bell's palsy, half my face was paralysed, the paralysis went through my body, and um, at the age of 19, it was about the scariest thing that I'd, I just did not think that that would ever happen to me. It was really hard to come back from that, like especially I was told that um, I might not live. And at that age, when you think that you're going to achieve so much, to then be told, no, nah, this could be it. And I was like, no, I haven't done it yet. I haven't achieved what I wanted. It was, it was tough, but I just went, stuff that, man. If, I, if I've finally got months, then these are going to be the best months ever. And I just... I decided not to listen to it and um, just live the best I could with the amount of time I had. Having such a close brush with death made Carly reassess her life. If I wanted to have the freedoms and be able to make whatever choices I want in my life, I would needed money behind me and that's when I got really passionate about creating not just a little bit but a hell of a lot of money. Hi Sarah. Hi. Carly's Hi. drive and determination has paid off in a big way. How's Elvis? And now she wants to help others who are doing it tough. Being given the chance to be a part of The Secret Millionaire, it's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Hello. He's a bit more boisterous, isn't he? Yeah. I think I'm going to struggle with the reality of it. To be in there day in, day out, it's going to be extremely confronting for me. But we've got to face these things. They're happening. They're happening in our lives, in our neighbourhoods, and they're our responsibilities. I hope it makes me think differently, and I hope it creates a lasting effect in my life. Carly is packing for her trip leaving most of her designer range behind. I had to actually buy new shoes. <laughs> but I found a bargain. These bad boys were $6. I didn't want to be wearing, like, shiny new Nikes or, you know, like, I want to just... I really want to par it down. I don't imagine volunteers and that wear dresses. I'm bringing my big pink gym jumper. Very sexy, very nondescript. <laughs> While she's away, Carly will live off just $20 a day. And yesterday I was thinking, 20 bucks, that'll be easy. But then my breakfast was $23 yesterday. That was for a yogurt and a fruit salad. I don't think I'm in touch enough with reality. I think it's going to be a shock to the system. You guys have to stay here. G'day, how you going? Good, how are you? Good, thank you. Carly has no idea where she will spend the next week. Cheers. I'm actually nervous about whether I'll do a good job because obviously I've got a limited amount of time. And what if they don't want to talk to me? What if I can't relate? What if, you know? So I'm, I suppose, scared about that. Hi. Hello, how are you today? Good, but I have no idea where I'm going. My name is Carly Crutchfield. And let's have a look. So, Carly, you'll be travelling to Melbourne today with your final destination of Frankston. OK. Do you know where Frankston is? Like, no, where it's I don't. near? You'll be boarding from Gate 11 today. Have a great trip. Thank you very Thank much. You. See you later. Bye-bye. Carly's going to spend a week in Frankston, an hour out of the heart of Melbourne. I actually have no idea what I'm doing. I have not caught a train in forever. I've got to go check the map. 
Oh, Frankston P. Blue Line. I've heard of Frankston, but I don't really know anything about it at all. Yeah, a lot of these places on the surface, they can look fine or just like any normal suburb, but when you dig, you really see the problem. So I'm expecting it'll look okay, but it won't be okay. Frankston is the end of the train line, and despite its coastal setting, it's far from idyllic. It's an area notorious for drug abuse, violence, and homelessness. You can see, like, it's definitely lower socioeconomic. I mean, it's, it's rough. It's, you know, middle of the afternoon, and everything is not just shut up, but still roller doors. Get straight off the train and there's a youth service there, there's like a needle distribution place, there's outreach, there's a free pregnancy testing centre. But I've never seen that. Sorry? Oh, we're just filming a doco on like doing community work and volunteer work. Meeting some of the locals, Carly starts to get a feel for the area that will be home for the next week. Why did you get... It's pretty rough neighbourhood and it's pretty drug -fused. Is it? Yeah. Has it always been like that? Yeah. You guys don't have jobs? No, nah, I was a qualified chef and then I lost that job. How do you guys make money to survive? Uh, I'm only getting about 180 a fortnight now because of me rent and that. I'll just go out and steal, you know? Yeah. That's the only way you can survive. They were very open. I thought to myself, they've probably never had someone just listen. You know, they said everyone they know uses. It's just a way of life. He even said, why'd you come here? It's too much of a shithole. It's a little bit overwhelming, you know, you kind of go, what am I supposed to do? Carly's staying in a budget motel, and it's a long way from the top end of town. Right, this is the magic moment. At least it's no smoking. That's a start. Oh, it's actually not too bad. Oh. Uh. <laughs> I have actually stayed in worse. Oh, look, I've got little cookies. I'll need those. It's good. You know, there's nothing like a bathroom where you can sit on the toilet and brush your teeth at the same time. <laughs> I don't want to sound up myself, but the last hotel I stayed at was $3,000 a night, and the bathroom was about this big. With only a week on the ground in Frankston, Carly has a big job ahead of her trying to find people she can help. I knew that I'd be coming somewhere that has a problem, but now it has a face to it and it's real to me. I'm excited, but I'm, I'm still apprehensive. You were only waiting for this moment to 